any coals left. No, nope, we burnt it all down. We're gonna have to get the fire kit out. Dump a little bit of that wild rice in there too. Yeah. Sleep well last night? I did. It was a good night. <coughs> Fairly quiet. Well, this morning we'll eat our breakfast. We'll break camp and head on over. See what kind of relations we can establish with the natives. I believe they know we're here yet. I'm Lawrence Howard, of course, and uh, I was born in Hanover County, Virginia in 1734. My father was a carpenter, so I learned the carpentry trade. And then I got the uh, frontier bug, so I, uh, I fought in the French and Indian War. Um, I was at Braddock's defeat. I was fighting for the French side at the time. And then uh, after the war, uh, since the French couldn't be in the area anymore, we, I joined up with uh, and taking scouting now for the English and trying to gain trade relations with the Ojibwe for the English now that they're in the area. Looks mighty hardy. Hi, my name is uh, Tom Buker. And uh, my family uh, comes from uh, the Boston area. I am the third son of my father. The, the more children you had or the sons that you had, usually they could only take care of the, uh, the uh, first uh, couple of sons as far as education and training. So uh, this was uh, kind of the, the life that I was uh, somewhat forced into. But uh, out of all the children in my family, I probably have the best life. Well, shall we go scout out the, the camp? Let's go. See what kind of relations we can have with the native brother. You lead, and I'll take rear guard. We find the uh, native tribes very uh, welcoming to us, very hospitable, uh, the ones that we've come across so far. The natives that we encounter, they're a little bit concerned if the, uh, they've heard from the tribe from the, uh, the east that the uh, British have a tendency to come and stay. So that's one of the stumbling blocks that we're kind of running into their concerns towards us is that uh, we're going to come here and, and uh, want to uh, establish ourselves here. Um, we'll be using the reconnaissance information that we gain from the tribes to take back to uh, the English uh, so that they can establish trade relations now with the uh, natives uh, in, in getting the, the beaver pelts and uh, deer hides to be able to take back over to England to make into beaver hats and leather breeches, of course. I first got started on black powder. Um, I bought a, it was a cap lock from a pawn shop. It was, wasn't put together right, so I tinkered with it and made it work. I was hooked from there, so, so I started shooting black powder, but I didn't get started in the reenactment <clears throat> game till uh, about five years later. So I started getting interested in the Revolutionary War, and then I went back a little bit further and started getting into the French and Indian War. But it's for history's sake. I love that time period in history. It's just raw history. I mean, the land was, a lot of land was virtually unexplored by the, uh, the white people that came here and uh, he, didn't, he didn't have a name out on the frontier, uh, didn't have a social security number, <laughs> didn't need a driver's license, he didn't pay taxes, he didn't, you were free, as free as you could possibly be. It was a good life that way for a frontiersman but it, it could be a short life. I like that piece of history, I, I 
it's fun to research and go, to go back and then actually live like they did and see how hard it was. You know, it's not it's not easy. I mean, you sleep out in the cold, you're on the ground. You know, it's uh, you can see where things got a little bit rough for them. Um, I live in New Ulm, Minnesota, and I'm employed by the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. I'm a conservation officer pilot. I started uh, muzzleloader hunting when I was, uh, I guess, probably about 13. And so that got me into the, uh, the black powder rifle part of uh, the reenacting. I consider myself an uh, experimental historian. I, I love to read history. You know, for a lot of people in Minnesota, they, they assume that the uh, European history of Minnesota started in the uh, 1850s, 1860s, 1870s, because that's when great-grandpa came here. But there is a good, you know, 150 years of European occupation to Minnesota that's not quite as well known. You know, a lot of that history has been forgotten. And so when you read the, the accounts of uh, these early explorers that came here, the accounts are somewhat vague exactly what they did. And that's the things I like to go out. I like to go out and, and, and see exactly what all took place for these individuals to actually do the job. Tonight we eat like kings. We have game from Mother Earth here in the territory that we have arrived in and it is delicious to the taste. They were, they were a hardy individual. They were, a, they were a different breed than, or a different set of people than what lived in the city. That to come out into Minnesota and uh, survive up here in the winter, that took a different type of person, you know, with a couple of wool blankets and, uh, you know, that's basically the only thing you had to keep them warm. So their mean ruggedness, I guess, is what you'd call it. Uh, they were truly rugged individuals. Sleep well tonight, Mr. Buker. Sleep well. Wake me up when it's half over. I will do that. <laughs> <laughs>